There are no confirmed reports on this. It appeared today in a Lebanon news service, a Lebanese news organization, Tayyar.org, T-A-Y-Y-A-R, citing AFP news sources. And uh, they claim that the vermin who stormed the U.S. consulate in Benghazi, Libya on Tuesday, raped him before murdering him. I want to say one other thing about Libya before we move on to some callers. Now, who was overthrown by Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama? Why, the evil man Gaddafi, right? When this uprising began in Benghazi, where the attack on the embassy occurred a year ago, do you know what Gaddafi said? Gaddafi at that time said that the revolt that supported by Obama was the work of terrorists, long native to eastern Libya, and Gaddafi warned the world that if they were not crushed, Libya would become the Somalia of the Mediterranean, a string of radical Islamic emirates just across the water from southern Europe. And guess what? How in the world did this happen? And how in the world can an administration be so out of touch with reality that after the embassy is burned to the ground and the ambassador is killed and or sodomized, they still say give it a chance, that they're, they're our kind of people, they're our friends. I've never seen anything like this. Either they're all insane, naive academicians, or they're all on drugs. There's no other explanation for this. Did you remember what Hillary Clinton did when they killed Gaddafi? Do you still have that tape in case you all missed it? Here is the great genius Hillary Clinton, the great woman of peace, the compassionate Hillary Clinton. Okay, keep looking for it and tell me when we have it. After Gaddafi was found and brutally murdered, apparently he was sodomized as well, incidentally, because that's how it's done over there. That's how they treat uh, uh, the enemy in that part of the world, the, tribal, the tribesmen who are now our friends or the friends of the administration. It was shocking to hear Hillary Clinton celebrating his death. Play it now, Beowulf. Go ahead, please. We came, we saw, <laughs> he died. <laughs> you hear the gals? That's the compassionate administration that we have today. The triumvirate of the Valkyries. The triumvirate of the Valkyries. Hillary Clinton, uh, Samantha Power, and Susan Rice. They thought it was just wonderful. You see, they thought democracy was the answer. Now the embassy's on fire. The ambassador's dead, his corpse desecrated, and Obama's so satisfied with his work that he feels it's time to take a break and go fundraising in Las Vegas. In fact, that's where he is. He's not managing the fires that are burning in the Middle East. He's managing to raise money. Let's listen to him if you think I'm making this up. Here is your commander-in-chief today. At least I thought he was our commander-in-chief today. I, 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 want, I want to begin tonight by just saying a few words uh, about uh, a tough day that we've had today. You know, we, uh, we, we, we lost four Americans last night who were killed uh, when they were attacked uh, at a diplomatic post in Libya. Attacked by who? Who, by ghosts? Who attacked them? I, I mean, no enemy? They were attacked by who? By gastritis? They were attacked by uh, a virus? They were attacked by a bacterium? Who attacked them? There's no name. You see, to our government, there is no enemy. But the enemy knows who their enemy is. That's one thing about them. They know who their enemy is. And as I say, you know, this report, which is unconfirmed about the, the uh, uh, sodomization or the sodomy, the rape of our ambassador by the very people he tried to befriend, they rape soldiers that they capture. You're not seeing it from their point of view. You see, the problem with Americans today is that we're too chauvinistic. We don't see the world through the eyes of 15th century uh, men, proud men. They're very proud. I mean, just ask Hillary Clinton about their culture. She's in love with them. Soros is in love with them. Uh, Brzezinski's in love with them. Jimmy Carter's in love with them. Obama's in love with them. He seems to spend more time courting them than courting the American patriot. Why, just last week we learned that uh, Eric Holder, our attorney general, was fighting to make certain that U.S. military personnel who are overseas don't vote. That, that, I mean, the important thing is to, is to make sure that they don't vote. Oh, you could say they serve us uh, at a ceremony or something, but you certainly don't want all of those right-wing guys with guns to go in and vote because you know which way they're going to vote. 
you can pretty be sure after they face the, the tribesmen uh, which way they're going to vote. They're not going to vote for our commander-in-chief. I think they're going to vote for a replacement. And so if you're Eric Holder, what you do is you make certain that they don't vote. Isn't that the American way? Now, the important thing is, remember what Obama said about Libya, is that the leaders there, the tribesmen who were running the country, who just burnt their embassy to the ground and, and killed our ambassador, they were democratically elected. Emphasis on the word elected. See, we want to make sure that every Iraqi can vote, every Afghani can vote, every Libyan can vote, but we want to make sure that not every American can vote. In fact, we want to make certain that only some Americans vote under Obama. The illegal alien should vote twice and often. Uh, the people in Florida should be able to vote in New York and Florida and anywhere else. Vote, vote early and vote often. If you live in Boca Raton and you live in Queens or Brooklyn, why, be sure to vote in two or three different uh, locations for Obama because that's the kind of vote that the administration wants. But these right-wing crackpots who are willing to put down their life for America, they shouldn't be allowed to vote. They're just cannon fodder to this administration.